Before I introduce the student speaker, I want to also thank all of you, faculty and staff, that came from Dominica. And I want to tell you, we have a, a special guest who came with us this year, Alexis George, many of you know. It is my, my privilege to introduce Dr. Brian Kendall, one of this year's graduates. Dr. Kendall came to Ross University from Texas A&M with strong academic background and graduated today with highest honors. He showed a propensity to volunteer his time to help others as a tutor. Along his journey with his wife, also a graduate today, he became a father in his third year and a member of the recreational football team. He has become a well-rounded individual and physician, perfect for starting his emergency medicine residency at New York Medical College. Dr. Kendall, please come forward and share your reflections on the medical school experience. Good afternoon. What a privilege and honor to be able to represent our class today. I would like to thank Ross University for giving me this opportunity. Uh, and I would also like to thank my amazing wife who nominated me with an email to Ross. In fact, after she revealed what she had done and had uh, forwarded me the email, I cried like a baby in the middle of ICU rounds. So after my tears were dry and my ego shattered, I sat down to write my speech and of course started where anyone would start. I googled inspirational quotes. <laughs> Two hours and 20 Harlem Shake videos later, <laughs> I had nothing. Come on, self, I thought. This should be easy. You're in the 20th grade. And then it hit me. <laughs> I don't need inspirational quotes to write a speech. We have learned and experienced enough these last four years to write a novel. Who, um, who honestly remembers any of that, though? We have been too obsessed with our up-to-date and Hippocrates apps, and on the island, the person sitting in front of you's Facebook. <laughs> so I figured we could all use a little reminder of just what we have learned these past four years. We learned that no matter what you do or who you bribe, Liat will always lose your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> We learned that as soon as you reveal you're a new medical student, your third cousin, once removed, has some odd poop that he'd like you to help him diagnose. <laughs> we learned that names can be deceiving, especially when you hear that Dominica has a Starbucks and a 7-Eleven, <laughs> only to find out that once on the island that 7-Eleven has more varieties of cat and dog food than people food, and that Starbucks doesn't even serve coffee. We learned that it is not only possible to study through multiple power outages, but also through a hurricane and a volcanic eruption. If you played or watched sports on the island, you learned that the worst people to get injured around are first and second year medical students. I personally heard these words spoken. Oh, sweet man, you totally have a Coley's fracture. Does anybody have a camera? Does anybody know what we do now? We learn to persevere. I'll be honest, being from Texas, we don't use that word. We say something poetic like, get back on the horse, or keep on keeping on. So I looked up the definition. It means to continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty, or with little or no indication of success. Listed under synonyms was medical school. We learned even more about sacrifice. We have missed out on a lot these past four years. Maybe you missed your brother's graduation because you couldn't afford the time or the ticket to fly back home. Perhaps you missed your child's soccer season because you were studying for the step. You missed weddings, reunions, birthdays, holidays, maybe even missed spending the last few moments with a loved one. You sacrificed those moments willingly in order to devote yourself to becoming a better physician so that someday you can hopefully keep your patients from having to make those same sacrifices. Finally, we learned the most about determination. At some point, every single graduate here today has been told that we should choose a different profession or you don't have what it takes to become a doctor. But we didn't listen to them. 
we kept working and fighting for our dream. Ross took a chance on us that no one else would, and we were determined to prove Ross right and everyone else wrong. We studied 12 plus hours every single day for months straight, preparing for four hour examinations every four weeks. On top of that, we prepared for anatomy practicals, histology practicals, neurology practicals, and ICM clinical exams, to name a few. And after 16 months of extreme stress, no sleep, and enough caffeine to kill an elephant, we were rewarded with the comp. <laughs> and be honest, we all thought that after the comp was over and we were back in the States, that we had it made. Living in the States, big third and fourth years, roaming the halls, saving lives, delivering babies. Wrong. <laughs> We still had to make it through rotation scheduling changes and cancellations, varying degrees of helpful preceptors, and of course, minor eight to nine hour examinations called Step 1, Step 2 CK, and Step 2 CS. You could have ended it at any moment, said medicine isn't for me, and pursued another path, and no one would have blamed you. In fact, we would all have been jealous of you. <laughs> but you studied, practiced, researched, sweat, and cried through it. And now you are sitting here. Ross was right. They were wrong. We are now part of a long line of Ross graduates who have learned the same attributes of perseverance, sacrifice, and determination. The Ross alumni have continued to use what they learned and have become great physicians who have made our path that much easier. Let's continue that tradition and never forget the lessons we have learned and where we came from. Four years ago, you were told to look left, look right, and most, uh, and most likely one of us would not be here today. Now I want you to look left, look right, and breathe. You made it. Congratulations, Ross University Class of 2013. Congratulations, my fellow doctors.